I'm Chosen Architect, and this is Dawncraft. So today is episode 10, and that means it's World Download Day. That's right, if you're a supporter of any tier, whether that's on Patreon, Twitch, over on YouTube here with the YouTube members, or even a Discord Premium member, be sure to hop on the Discord and get your World Download today. Anyways, let's get on with today's video. So I've been thinking, what is one thing that could make me incredibly powerful, or at least more powerful than I currently am? And I was thinking, ours is definitely the way to do that. Not only can we create some really good farms that will help us with enchanting, we can also set ourselves up with some familiars, which will give us some benefits that could be incredibly helpful, such as the star buckle, which can actually grant us speed too just permanent speed too. And it can also allow us to have a sort of X-ray effect to find gold ore underground. How crazy is that? But we can also use star buckles to automatically farm some crops for us. Now I know we have create and we have the ability to use uh, the create to auto farm, which we'll definitely get into soon. But what I'm thinking is I want to set up a automatic source farm, very similar to this using source berries. And of course, this has been a farm that's been around for quite a while, um, but I want to use create to turn the source berries into bone mill. And I think that would be a good use of our source berries. Uh, of course, we'll keep some, like we definitely want to be able to keep some, but uh, turning them all into bone mill will be good. And it'll also keep the agronomic source link constantly producing. And you actually get a bonus on the amount of source. And then we're going to use this to power a Drigme farm. Yes, a Drigme farm. And uh, you may be wondering what that is. Well, I'm going gonna, gonna to explain it to you. Now, before I run off and uh, find myself some Drigmes, uh, I have a visitor. And, uh, well, this visitor is actually offering two Roadrunner feathers. Oh, come on. That's awesome because that's a quest that I've needed to complete for a while for one of our villagers over here. Oh, finally, we're getting to complete this. I mean, I just never went out and looked for the Roadrunners, which are kind of in a deserty biome. This guy. I got your Roadrunner feathers, man. Yeah. <laughs> the quality has seemed to be especially good. I'll see if I can make use of uh, it in other ways. Anyways, here's for your trouble. Now, the good thing is, is um, that basically just improved our reputation again in this village, which is very nice. And um, I don't know if the reputation like helps with, for example, the cleric. I have a cleric here and he'll throw regeneration potions on me, uh, which is kind of cool. But yeah, I'm slowly but surely getting things going. Ooh! Oh, yeah, this right here. I have a quest for this guy to get a witch hat. And uh, so we do need to also focus on killing witches. Um, I haven't seen very many, but uh, you can find them underground. They do spawn from things. But anyways, let, let's go hunting for Drigme. Uh, last episode, I did find the Wilden Horn, and uh, that was underground in a chest. Of course, you can get these from killing the, uh, the Wolf Wildens. But we need to head off in, in search of a Drigme. They're like little fellas that just wander around and well, we can toss us on the ground near them and we'll get ourselves a charm. And I would prefer if I could use all of these on it. It'd be nice. If we can get three of them, the more that we have, the better off we're going to be. Now, I didn't have to go very far to find one of these little fellas as they do just spawn around. But if I give him a Wilden Horn, he will take it happy and then pop into two Drigme shards. And uh, this is the equivalent of two of the little guys. It's kind of funny. They actually kind of duplicate there. But I want to find one more. One more if I can. And there we go. There's another little fella. Look at, it, look at how happy he is. Oh, they're so cute. Well, I did just stumble on upon another village, and uh, which is right next to mine. And this guy is wanting some bread. And I think I can handle this. And I, I wonder if this is a quest line. That could potentially get us a farmer's contract. He needs a couple of loaves of bread. And this is a neighbor. So let's get those loaves of bread. There we go. And except, okay. So yeah, we just got a, 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 tr a farmer trade scroll, scroll. Oh, how nice. And so I guess, I mean, it doesn't matter what village you do it in. Uh, it's just so long as you get them done. So I have a farmer's trade scroll now. I just need to keep an eye out on like villagers that have like exclamation points above their head, I guess. And just try my best to complete them as we go about. So in setting all this up to get a Drigme to actually be usable, well, we have to transform it a little bit. And for this, we need fish, wheat, apples, 
carrots, and seeds. And then the rest is going to be the source gem. So we need three source gems per, like so. That's probably the most expensive part. And then we just place our drink me charm in there. And it is going to combine all those things and give us a usable drink me, um, which is pretty darn cool. Pretty darn cool that we can use this. And I think we can even get a familiar technically once we place one of these down. I think this will allow us to do a ritual that will allow us to get a familiar, if I remember correctly. I'm going to do the same thing for the Starbuckle, except it's just a little bit different of a recipe. Now, the only other thing I needed is, well, the Dominion Wand. This is how we're going to control many of these little mobs from ours and uh, tell it, you know, basically what chests to deposit things at. Uh, it could be even used for such things as the Amethyst Golem, which is honestly kind of broken. I, I will say the Amethyst Golem is, uh, is a pretty powerful little fella. You can actually create Amethyst Clusters or not amethyst clusters, but actual amethyst. Uh, yeah, budding amethyst. <laughs> Just out of regular amethyst. It's pretty crazy. Now, to get the familiars, I'm going to need a ritual brazier. This is going to allow me to use the, the ritual of binding, or the tablet of binding you can see right here. And we can actually start a ritual on it. And uh, that should give us a familiar, specifically for the Starbuckle. That's definitely one that I want. Now, one thing I also need is, well, the vexing archwood saplings. And unfortunately, I don't want to go out and hunt for them. So I'm going to use some of my manipulation essence in order to convert this sapling. So we can convert this into this. Actually, might as well get one of the three, I guess. So we'll do that. And then this will turn into a vexing. And so now I have the three colors. I think there's three different types of trees. Um, but the vexing is definitely the one I want to be able to at least get the Starbuckle familiar. Oh man, doesn't that look pretty? <laughs> oh man, I, I actually really like this wood cutting, this like tree chopping mod. It is quite satisfying. So let's see if we can do this. So I'm going to place the Starbuckle and then place this down and then activate it and then right click again. And that should see that there's a Starbuckle there. And there we go. Now we have the bound script Starbuckle. And when we click that, it unlocks the familiar here. And then we can now summon our familiar. And yes, it'll follow us and give us speed two. Oh, that is so nice. So, so very nice. Now, if you want to get rid of this, well, you're going to have to create a new spell. And uh, we are going to set this to project and set dispel. And uh, this is going to, you know, remove the familiar, as you can see right there. But if you ever want to get them back, all you have to do is just click again and you can get the little fella back. Um, and it's important to do this because whenever you're traveling with your waystones, well, it'll make it a little bit difficult if you, uh, you use the waystone and travel, you'll, you'll sort of leave this little fella behind you. He won't travel with you, unfortunately, or if he ever gets lost or anything like that probably the best thing to do kind of like a like a wolf now i don't know if we can put this on our familiar but it would be really cool if we could can we come here buddy come here oh yeah you're looking mighty cool oh yeah we could definitely put this on our familiar that is hilarious we've got to come up with a name for our familiar starbuckle because this this guy is going to be sticking around for a little while so i would love to hear what you guys have to say in the comments what what should we name this little fella just something that's easy that we can call him like jerry or like you know something like that i, I kind of like jerry but i don't know we'll, we'll see we'll see uh, let me know in the comments so i just did a few tests to determine how far out this actually reaches with these source berries and it turns out it's only 12 blocks, so it can actually reach 12 blocks from its main location, um, which is pretty interesting. That is a pretty interesting thing. So what I want to do is I just want to surround this, if I can, um, with uh, source berries, and hopefully one agronomic source link is enough. So to put this in perspective, this is ultimately how large this farm is going to be, and we should be able to get it by with this one source jar that is going to feed into a network of source jars. And uh, that's going to be pretty darn cool. Now, these star buckles are pretty important. So let me kind of show you what they're going to do. So hopefully I can get this all set up and working. Uh, let's go ahead and get a place so I can get more source berries, right? Um, and uh, we'll place down the star buckles right here and right here. 
Um, and then I believe we click on the entity and then we shift click onto the chest and it says the Starbuncle, the, the, the Starbuncle will store items here. So we just right click and then we just click on the chest. And so what these guys are going to go out and do is they are going to collect the source berries. They actually harvest them. Uh, we take damage, by the way, from them. They do not. They're going to collect them all and put them into the chest for us. And then this is going to create a cycle where these are going to always be growing and always be producing source, which is pretty darn cool. Now, um, if you want a, a very specific path for these guys to take, um, you can click them with a block, I believe. Uh, they do prefer like regular like path blocks um, and they'll actually walk down path blocks but if there's nothing like that around, they'll just go in one direction like this. Now, as they're collecting them, I'm just going to continue filling this whole thing out. And the same thing goes with the dispel. If you want to pick these guys up, use the dispel on them or just punch them. It feels a lot better to just, you know, use a dispel on them, uh, but you can punch them and they will drop back into their charm. Now, right now I have this going into a chest, but what I want to do is actually use create and have them deposit into the chest. And then the create mod, I will just have it sent into a hopper and uh, yeah, that hopper is then just going to turn it into bone mill and we will have unlimited bone mill along with this farm. So right now I am prepping for something quite big. I'm going to be putting a relay on top of this and this is how we're going to actually move source around and uh, it can go up to 30 blocks. I hope this isn't over stretching that it'll be pretty darn close, pretty darn close. But uh, what we need to do is we need to say, uh, we need the position of the source to go into this. And so now this relay uh, should be pulling and then I'll select the relay and then hopefully be able to set it to this relay. And it's just too far away, just barely. Uh, I can only reach up to 30 blocks. So I might have to make another relay in order to get this to work. We'll see. Um, I could actually Pull the relay a little bit closer. Let's count the blocks. I think what I'll do instead is I will place it right here. And then is it still linked? There we go. Oh, nope. That is the I'm going to have to relink the whole thing. So I will right click there and this should hopefully be able to reach. And there we go. We can see the position is set. And now I've got to tear this whole thing down. Um, and uh, well, this is actually going to link up to what is going to be a depositor uh, relay. And that is going to send to any jars that we put down here. So I'll set the position of this one, then to connect to the one that's down here. Uh, like I said, this is a depositor. It's a little bit interesting. So long as it's within, within five blocks of a source jar, it will try its best to send to those source jars. So from what I can do now is place source jars down and it will fill this one up and then it'll try to fill the rest of them, basically creating sort of a source battery, which we're definitely going to need. So there you go. You can see it is now filling that jar. Now the Drigme is going to be pulling from these source jars and well, it also needs a chest and a mossy cobblestone. So I'm going to place the mossy cobblestone right here. And this is going to create the hinge once I place my Drigme. And this will farm mobs that are up to 10 blocks away from it in all directions. So it'll farm my cows, it's going to farm my chickens, it's going to farm my sheep, and farm my pigs. Pretty cool, I think. Um, and then we can put other things in here. We can find other mobs and put them in these, these pins. Um, and I can even expand this out to add hostile mobs and stuff like that once we get those. So, let's get this started. And all I have to do is right click it. You can see it's going to start pulling some source and doing all kinds of fun stuff. And we have our first little Drigme, little happy guy. And you can see these this aura that's circling around. That means it is doing its job. And uh, all I have to do now is place down a chest and all of the stuff will end up going into this chest that it farms. And of course, the more Drigme, the better. So I'm going to place down more of his friends since we ended up getting four of them and let's just hope that we have enough source uh now another cool thing we can do is actually die the trick me's so die a couple of them so what we can do is actually use cyan and orange dye on these guys to change the way they look and so this is a brown dyed one this is a cyan dyed one and then that's an orange dyed one 
I love this. And with just that short amount of time, look at this. We've already got leather, meat, chicken, and experience, which is one of the main things I wanted from this farm. Now, you may be wondering how do you pick up hostile mobs, and that's where the cage trap is going to really come into play. This thing is pretty darn cool. We can actually pick up just about any mob and farm it with the cage trap. Now, this might be a little difficult to do, but for example, something like a creeper, you just get it to walk over just like that. And now we have a creeper in a box, which yes, sounds incredibly dangerous, but that is, that is how it's going to work. And uh, to place it down, well, it's going to be a little bit more challenging actually, especially since this is a creeper. Why did I choose a creeper? Why? What, what, who did I hurt? Now, a skeleton is probably going to be a little bit harder to catch. Oh, but no, there we go. We actually got it. Uh, I don't think ghouls drop anything that's super useful, if I remember correctly. Uh, but skeletons would be pretty nice. That would be just an abundance of arrows and bones. So let's try and get our creeper in here. So I have a little bit of a space. And you do have to make sure whenever you place this in that you give it at least three blocks tall worth of space to place this in and there we go so we have ourselves our creeper in here um and then of course i can cover it up just like this very very cool there's a little creeper fella and the drigme should see these uh see the mob and uh yeah it should be able to now pull gunpowder off of it and things like that oh almost forgot we do need to name it and we're gonna name it cooper Cooper the Creeper. <laughs> and then, of course, last but not least, let's get a skeleton in here. Now, I, I'm pretty sure you need more than one of these. Uh, looks like that little fellow wandered over here. Um, but yeah, you're probably going to want more than them, more than just one. But one for right now will certainly get the job done. Uh, I wonder if it will farm the sombrero on this. By the way, I'm naming this skeleton child. We have Cooper and the child. If you get it, you get it. Now, the crazy part is just in the short time that this has been running, this is all the stuff we've gotten, including this greater experience gym. And just to put this in perspective, if I just consume one, oh my gosh, the amount of levels that this gives us is so good. This is just, this is just a perfect little experience farm. And I believe these can be combined like this to make even more. And there we go. We should be able to easily use this as a very simple means of getting experience. Now, subsequently, with all of this being farmed, our source berries here, we've created ourselves a purple dye farm, which uh, is really great because all of the stuff that purple dye is used for goes towards waste stones. <laughs> it's pretty crazy. And now we can craft a warp stone, which has a five minute cooldown. But when we activate this and use it, it doesn't cost experience to travel to destinations. So I think that is worth it in its own right. Now, I think at this point it is time to go after the Sentinel Knight and try this out. And you guys have been telling me, Chosen, use dual wielding. Dual wielding, you say? Hmm. I'm kind of interested. And oh my gosh, the DPS is so much more. So I think uh, dual wielding is definitely worth it. Look at that target DPS, 16. What? Okay. And it regens so fast. Okay, this is definitely much better. Now, I did enchant this and it ended up getting sharpness on breaking and smite three on there, which is pretty nice. But this is still the bomb diggity of swords. Um, so I'm hoping that with all this combined, we can hopefully take on this Sentinel Knight. Though so off to the south we go, and I'm pretty sure I know exactly where this Sentinel Knight is, because I believe we did encounter it, uh, or at least a Sentinel Knight in our journeys. Uh, it's gonna be pretty fun, pretty cool. Hopefully this boss is not as bad as I'm thinking it's going to be, but we'll see, we'll see. Hopefully it has a really cool mechanic, because all of them so far have been incredibly fun. Holy smokes, is that a... a what it is that after me oh it's after me okay um whoo that's a griffin let's get out of there let's get out i've got to what are you doing dude 
Why is it trying to pick me up? I don't want to go where you want me to go. No, it is going to kill me and I am so far out. I am so far out, no. So this go around, I figured I would go ahead and teleport to my original village and uh, it actually worked out because I'm not too far. Thankfully I didn't lose anything, but this is the Sentinel Knight and there's another puzzle room here. I'm hoping this didn't interfere too much with this guy, but what I need to do now is get a waystone down and get ready to see if this guy is going to be tough or not. Oh boy, moment of truth. Moment of truth. Here's what this guy looks like. I'm guessing you roll past him. Whoo, okay. That didn't do any damage. Oh, shoot. All right, let's 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 get out of here. Let's dodge out of here so I can reach in. I did switch my food on. We did a good a good amount of damage to him. Which isn't too bad. Does he take damage? No, he just completely negates all damage. Oh, shoot, he can hit me with a ranged spell. Is that is there a I thought something was following me. Oh, that it it tracks me. Okay. Okay, let's go. Let's roll back. Oh, oh. Woo. Okay, okay, okay. So we're doing a little bit of damage. What is inside the tree? That I don't know. I wonder if the range tack, if I should uh, just definitely jump up in the air. That's what I should probably do. Okay, let's hit him. I'll keep at him. Oh, oh. This is actually not too bad, not too bad. We should be able to handle this. Should be able to handle this. Okay, let's get up to him. Oh, nice. We got him perfectly with the ultimate. Whew. Yeah, okay. So like slowness is definitely a pain. Woo! Trying to dodge out. Oh, got him on that one. Look at that. Okay, if we get too far away, he goes, he definitely goes for the jugular on that. There we go. We got out. Oh, and he hits like some rocks. Whoa, what is that? No. Okay, let's re like, get, let everything reach in. And then we'll push. Oh. Ooh. Okay. But we're doing good. We're doing good, I think. I think we're doing pretty darn good. As long as we can avoid everything that's going on right now. He just killed it. Killed him. Oh. Okay. Let's go around the tree. There's something in the middle. I have no idea what that is. Hey. Hey. And... There we go. We got him. We're doing something to him. I don't know what. I don't like that guy, though. Oh. Okay. Let's get rid of the silver beast. I don't need to deal with you right now. No. Oh, and this guy can slow us, too. Of course, I decide to fight this at nighttime. Ooh. Ooh, we almost got him. We almost got him. There's a church doctor bothering us. Come on. Come on. Let's get out of there. And here we go. We're going to finish him off. And come on. Come on. And down he goes. Oh my goodness. And uh, this is something as well. I have no idea what this is, but can we pick it up? I, I don't know what this thing is. 
Does that have something to do with the wood? It's just floating. It's just a coin. Interesting. Maybe it's something we have to put into that place. We got an emu egg and we got a sentinel sword. Dropped from the sentinel knight and a sentinel key. Huh. That is pretty darn cool. What does this look like to use? Huh. Very, very cool. I still don't think it's better than dual wielding swords because that seemed to take care of this guy quite efficiently. I guess while I'm here, I might as well take on everyone that's here. Holy smokes. I think they those are good guys. I actually think those are good guys, but oh well. What is this? Is this supposed to be another parkour challenge? I feel like it is. Uh, there's levers and a big mini game in here. Oh boy. So on this, it's definitely a logic puzzle, I'm pretty sure, where you need to turn the redstone on and you need to understand the ons and offs of redstone to ultimately power this one from the looks of it. So to do that, these redstone signals, this needs to be inverted. So the orange needs to be inverted. I think that's brown or brown. I can't really tell that's orange. I think that orange is brown. So if this is on, if this moves, that'll invert that signal like that. You can see that is now off. And then we also need this one off. And this one needs to be off as well, which is the black. I, I see. I know my redstone a little bit, so I do understand this one. Um, yeah, and then this also needs to be off, and this receives a signal from this, which I don't even know what this one is. Pink? I think. So ultimately, I solved it uh, with the white. I, I just unexpectedly solved it. Um, basically, I had to make sure and shut off like the white. I, I thought I needed it powered, but actually did not. Um, and I needed to get this one right here turned off or turned uh, no redstone. So it was on. So it shut this line off and making sure these are all powered. So it inverts the signal here and then this gets reinverted, thus powering it. Pretty cool. Pretty cool little puzzle. I love these puzzles. They're so nice. Like that's pretty sick. And we have enough now, I believe, to be able to buy uh, another upgrade. So I think I'm going to grab another stamina uh, for sure. I feel like the stamina is definitely more worth it than anything. And uh, now we have a little bit more of a stamina bar. Now let's contact the guild master and find out what's going next. So uh, it says a road to the eye holder. So already done. Wait, what? Okay, you defeated the eye holder before you gave up the map. Hmm. Exact eye holder drop then. As a matter of fact, drop it and pick it back up again. But it didn't drop an eye. I don't think. So do I need to use the key on this? Oh, that's where the eye is. Oh, that's interesting. Very interesting, actually. Okay. Well, there's the item. Uh, we, now we can talk to the guild master. All right, tell me what's up, my fine sir. Amazing, even the Sentinel Knight is no match for you. Well, you're approaching the end of your journey. How do you feel? Anyways, you need to summon the next eye holder. Wait, we have to summon it? Um, here, take the knot of hair and the map to the summon to its summoning altar. Okay, I'll take it. And this is the map of the fire giant. And does it talk about it? The fire giant, okay, has disappeared from our realm many moons ago. We were able to extract a knot of its hair before it left. The great clerics enchanted magic into the item, which should theoretically allow you to summon the giant should you offer the item at the altar. Hmm. If you ever lose the hair knot, combine a fire charge with a basic fire resistance potion in a brewing stand to resummon the item. Ooh, okay. Um, did we get the fire knot? Okay, we did. Oh, okay. I was about to say it would be really hard for us to uh, resummon since we don't exactly have access to the be able to brew potions yet. But that's pretty darn cool. I I think today 
was quite the adventure. And now we get to add our new eye now with five eyes. I think things are looking pretty darn good. Guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, be sure to just smack that subscribe button if you haven't already and smack that like button as well. Also comment down below if you uh, have been enjoying thus far and what has been your favorite part. Also be sure to get your world download if you are a supporter of any tier. And of course, guys, it's time to thank the supporter of today's video. And that, my friends, is going to be a huge thanks going out to Liquid OP over on YouTube, becoming a YouTube member and supporting in a, one of the most fantastic ways. And of course, guys, if you're interested in supporting as well and potentially getting a world download or access to the supporter servers, all you got to do is check out the Discord. There's an FAQ and uh, it explains just about everything you need to know. So, guys, be sure to check that out. Discord.gg forward slash chosen architect and join the crew today. Guys, I hope to see you in the next one. And of course, as always, thanks for watching. These little guys are just so happy. Look at, look at them dancing. Oh, I just I love it so much. I love it so much. Yeah.